So what exactly is a tea session? How is that compared to getting some tea? Well, a tea session is a more formal way of doing tea. And what I try to do is to not emphasize the ritual part of it, but to emphasize the personal contact and the experience of the tea. So even tea ceremony isn't so much about the ceremony and ritual as it is about real presence. And drinking tea, which is sort of a plant medicine which creates presence in people, brings people into the moment, lets them drop off their day, and also brings in intention, attention, a sense of service, all these things that connect people and bring out their humanity. And tea's a wonderful vehicle for that, for people getting together like that. What kinds of teas do you tend to serve uh, at your tea sessions? I like using rare teas, teas that have a lot of chi in them or natural energy. So a lot of my teas are either aged, like aged oolongs or aged pu'er teas from Yunnan province, or just very rare oolongs and other, other teas from China, but teas that are from very clean places that have incredible flavor and aromas so that it's a beautiful experience because I feel like beauty is a big part of tea and beauty is a big part of what makes life special and tea ceremony is about beauty and it is about making every moment special so I try to find the teas that can bring that out in people that experience. So you've got kind of a reputation for um, getting people tea drunk for people <laughs> who aren't familiar with that that term what exactly is tea drunk and, and uh, how do you get it? Well, some of these teas, uh, like I said, have a lot of chi in them or energy, especially teas that come from older trees or from the aged Yunnan teas. Um, those teas can come from trees that are a thousand years old and have roots that go 30, 40 meters into the forest. And so over the life of a tree, it's gathering all this energy from the whole biosphere and it's all going up into the tree and the leaf. And so when you drink these teas, they just there's so much life in them, and they really create a different experience. You, they call it tea drink because some of these teas you'll drink one little cup like this, and you sort of get drunk from it. And so it's quite fun. You're very grounded at the same time. Tea is very grounding, but you definitely sometimes feel like your bones are melting, or like people sometimes laugh and get a little silly. Do you have to be especially tuned into? chi or energy or be somebody who does yoga or no, meditation to, to get tea drunk? That's the beautiful thing about it is good tea speaks for itself and no matter what anybody tells you if, if you don't feel it don't believe in it so if you're drinking good tea you'll feel it I have so many people clients who come who have never done meditation yoga or are familiar with energetic terms and they feel every single thing and there it's such a joy to do that with people because They'll feel things opening up in their system. They'll feel some, these teas make you ecstatic. Some make you feel drunk. Some make you feel meditative. Some make you run around like a crazy 12 year old. Um, there's so many different types of energy in different teas, different rare teas. Um, so it's really fun. And I try to work with that energy and system in uh, tea sessions with people. How did uh, you get started doing Heaven's Tea and, and uh, what are some of the things that you offer? Um, like most things in my life, the tea thing just happened. I always loved Asian things, and my dad used to take me to the Met Museum in New York when I was little, and I remember just looking at the Buddhas when I was like six. And so all my life I've had this connection to Asian culture and uh, Asian uh, yoga and martial arts and Asian art, and it just sort of flowed naturally through a cooking career into tea. Um, and so I offer tea classes and traditional aspects in the art of tea. Like uh, I have classes on brewing tea, like the subtle art of that, working with water and different types of materials to brew in, different types of Asian teaware. I have classes that are uh, ecstatic poetry and tea drinking sessions where we sit and drink tea and write poetry by the full moon. I do that in my outdoor tea house. I do tea sessions where we talk about sacred Asian art, which is also a field of mine. And I teach Chinese tea ceremony. Anything to do with art or health or tea and combining these, these elements because I feel like tea is in support of art and is in support of health and is, is something to make life more wonderful. It's not something just to focus in on itself strictly in the gourmet 
way. That kind of makes it dead. But tea's just part of life. And you should be able to take a Lipton tea bag and brew it in an old boot and make it wonderful for somebody by how you do it. Do it with real care and intent and a sense of giving to somebody else. So it's not even about gourmet tea. It's about giving. So um, I, I, have you ever used tea or had people in sessions where tea's been used medicinally or helped a problem or, or something that somebody was dealing with? Well, not directly because I'm not a doctor, but I, a lot of these teas, the, especially the aged teas, can open up channels and clear blockages and also help clean toxins out of the organs. So sometimes when we're doing a lot of these powerful teas, people will have emotional releases or things that people have been struggling with a little bit may clear up. Um, but it happens in so many ways. I feel like tea in itself is a healing, is something that supports healing in the body. And as a plant medicine, it's beautiful as part of something to help you get better in every way and more balanced and more connected with the world and the natural harmonies of the world because you're drinking nature. When you say rare teas, give me some sort of context. I mean, what, what, what is considered a rare tea and, you know... Well, the rare teas are, are rare because they're usually from very old groves or from very clean treasure tea places in China that have been cultivating for a thousand years or uh, places that are just where there's not a lot of the trees and so they're very carefully looked after. But it's really about quality and that's what makes a tea rare. If it has incredible energy to it, flavor, aroma, uh, the perfume it leaves on the breath, all these things are indications of rare tea. Um, and for me it's not about being rare, it's tea that when you drink it you feel it and that's, that's the tea that I try to find. And maybe other people don't think it's rare, but some teas are very powerful, both psychically and psychologically and physically. And those are the teas that I like to use. What teas do you tend to gravitate towards and, and, and enjoy the most? I love the aged teas a lot because they're lower in caffeine and have the most interesting flavor profiles, aroma profiles, and the most different kinds of energy in them. Each, each aged tea develops into its own sort of unique animal. And so it's very fun to drink those. What do you think is the biggest myth people have about tea that you think you, you could dispel? Well, I think one thing is that if you drink green tea, you won't have cancer and you'll live forever. <laughs> and, you know, all, almost all teas have antioxidants in them. And those things will help your health, but you need to drink a lot of green tea every day to have that effect. And it's totally good, but again, it's part of what you should be doing for your health regimen. It's not drinking green tea and then you'll be better. And a lot of times I tell people, you know, also you could just eat spinach or kale or something and get vitamins and antioxidants and nutrients. Um, and there's not such a big myth around it either. So how can people get more information about uh, what you do in Schedule T sessions? They can uh, look at, for me at heavenstea.com and I have a beautiful website and list my sessions every month. And my phone number is on the site. And they can either call or email me. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah.